All right, hello, how you doing? This is Kevin McCain, and uh, we're gonna be doing a painting of an apple today. I've got a little drawing I did of the apple I'm gonna do. There'll be a, a picture that you can uh, download and reference, so you can watch watch the video and then try to do a painting of it at your um, in your own studio or or uh, wherever you call your little place to paint. In terms of what we've got here, I've got just a plain canvas board. Um, nothing, nothing really special. You could use a stretch canvas. You could use a gesso panel. The only difference is, is the way the paint would move would be slightly differently on the different surfaces. I've also got a limited palette. So we've got titanium white through here. Uh, I was mixing a little bit of paint. You can see some of my titanium white's dirty. Uh, usually you don't want to leave it like that, so I take a palette knife and you'll just clean that up. So, you know, you, again, you want to keep your white as white as possible normally, so don't be afraid to sacrifice a little paint to keep it, keep it clean. So again, I've got, I've got the titanium white through here. This is, uh, again, this is a limited palette. One, one yellow, one red, one blue, burnt umber, and uh, ivory black. Uh, again, so for my yellow, again, titanium white, we have cad yellow light. You could use cad yellow lemon. Uh, you could even use cad yellow medium, truth be told. Um, it just, uh, you just choose one, one, uh, one yellow. Um, and this was the closest one I had because I've got cad yellow light, lemon, and deep. <laughs> but this was the closest, so I grabbed that. Uh, so this is a Namthal Red. Now I could also use a Lizard and Crimson. I could use Cad Red Light. Uh, I like the Namthal. It's kind of, it's not too warm. It's not too cool. It's, it's almost like a true red. I've got Cobalt Blue here. And then for my brown, I've got Burnt Umber. And you don't want to use a Transparent Oxide. This is an opaque Burnt Umber. Uh, and then I have Ivory Black. Not Chrome Black, not Bone... Um, well, ivory black is bone black, but not lamp black, not a, uh, not Mars black, but you want ivory black. Um, so, what I'm going to be painting here, I also got a couple brushes I'm going to be using. Um, what do we got here? We've got a number six that I'll be using for this. Uh, it's a bristle brush. These are flats. I'm probably going to use another uh, six just to blend with if I need to. So I'm gonna have that, uh, that number six as well. And then I'm gonna have a, uh, let's see, a number four. And uh, this is a number four. Um, again, we'll use this as well. This is, again, just a, uh, it's, a it's a flat as well. A little longer for the, by this company, but it's a nice flat. And I've got some odorless mineral spirits. Uh, for the inexpensive stuff, I like the Turpanoid Blue Label. Um, Turpanoid is actually not turpentine, it's, it's mineral spirits or paint thinner. And some, I've had someone try to tell me the difference, but they're both distilled uh, petroleum products, so I don't see what the difference is. But anyway, so I've got, I've got my mineral spirits I've, and that's kind of off camera, so it's over here because I'm left-handed. Um, I've got a little, again, a canvas board. And I think we're ready to go. Uh, I've got some paper towels to, to wipe uh, my, my paint off with. What I'm going to be painting here is I'm going to be painting a golden delicious apple. And just getting some of my nice, my, my, my little paper towel over here if you keep seeing this go by. But I'm painting a golden delicious apple. And those are the ones that are slightly yellow. Uh, it's sitting on a, a black tablecloth with a light on it with a white, well not white, but an off-white wall behind it. And so I've got again my, I've got, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, for the brown, for my burnt umber and my black, I've got my puddles of, uh, I've mixed it with white, so I've got a dark medium and a light brown, and I've got a dark medium and a light black. Now, the blacks I use is blue, and you can see, you know, these these grays, that they have a lot of blue to them. And then the browns, I use them to as, because this burnt umber is a dark, dark, dark orange. 
So I use this to darken or dull down oranges or yellows or reds. I use the black and the ivory black to dull down my blues, my greens, my purples. And I'm gonna start off very quickly just by, um, I've got a little medium here off the, off, off camera. Um, oh, let's prep this canvas. Um, if I don't do this, and there's times, just because I'm, I've painted so long, sometimes you get <laughs> the bad habits or you get in a hurry and you're like, ah, oh, uh, I'm gonna wanna cover this with a little bit of mineral spirits. I'm gonna cover the whole thing. If I don't do this, my paints won't flow. And I also gotta be careful that I don't leave, leave too much on, otherwise my paints will flow too much and I'll start to look like a watercolor. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and cover this so that every area has some of that mineral spirits on it. And then I'm gonna take my paper towel and I'm just gonna very gently wipe off the excess. Okay, so now I've prepped this, start painting. And again, I just don't want too much of that, that uh, mineral spirits left. Otherwise, when I, when I put everything on it, it's gonna just kinda, it's gonna bleed out like, like a watercolor. Um, I think I can move this over a little bit. I think that'll give me a little more mixing room. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and see if I can push this up a little bit for the, there we go. So we can see a little better. Now I got a little bit more room to mix with here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, I think I'll uh, see if there's a, there's a, um, got a couple other brushes over here. I think I might add to the mix a, uh, Um, this is a no, this is a, a number one flat in case I need any little details, and it's still it's a it's a bristle brush. All these are bristle brushes, and uh, oh, this is a filbert. A filbert just looks like a flat except it's cupped at the end, and so it's kind of like a round meets a meets a flat. Very nice brush. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my number four here, and I'm just going to cut in my my colors, and I want to keep my colors nice and flat. Um, no more than two colors for every area. So no more than two for the apple, two for the wall, or two for the uh, the tablecloth. And because my apple is my center of interest, I'm only going to have one value for the wall, one value for the tablecloth, and then two values for the for the apple. So this wall that I'm looking at is not really white. I mean, it's an off-white. It's 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 light, but it's not white. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and. Put, I got a little bit of this light brown, which is basically a dull, 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 dull orange. And the, and the light that I have, the temperature of the light has a little bit of orange to it. Now I added just a little bit of purple to this because there was a little bit of yellow in my brush and so I used a little complementary color, uh, which grays things down. So this is a lot more neutral now. And I think we'll add just a touch more of the orange. I'm gonna take a little bit of the brown, a little bit of the red. Maybe just a tiny bit of the yellow, just to add just a little bit of the fact that there is some of that, you know, warmth to the wall color, all that good stuff. Um, so there we go. I'll be about the. Now I'm putting that up there. And I'm gonna ask myself, does that look, does that look right? Now, as long as the value is right, I'm gonna be fine. If the value is not right, I'm in trouble. So. And I don't have enough paint either. I have to make sure that I have enough paint down. Now, I want to have enough paint that it's actually covering over um, the, uh, the drawing, covering over the canvas. So that's important. I'm going to also come on in here. Now again, if you have to have enough paint and if you can see through the paint, kind of like it's a, it kind of looks kind of like milk or something. You can get like a milky quality where you can see through it. That's not a good thing. So um, I had a little bit of that going on. So I, I I'm mixing more paint. Uh, I also have to the consistency of paint I want is somewhere between softened butter and heavy cream. If it gets as thin as whole milk, that's too thin. That's not enough paint. All right, so. 
you got to have enough paint to actually move this stuff around. There's got to be enough of, of a layer. And as Pete, now I'm not talking about super thick, but you can see light little strokes. Very soft, but they're there. And I'm using very little pressure. I'm also holding, I'm, I want to be holding back on my, on my, on my brush. I'm holding it in what's called a baton hand hold. So it's between, uh, um, actually I take that back. I'm using a tripod. Uh, it's between my thumb, my first finger, no, between my thumb and, pardon me, my thumb and my first finger, and then it's sitting on my third finger, like so. For you right-handed folk, it looks like, you know, there's my third finger. It looks about like that, tripod. Okay, so I guess I'm using a tripod. Normally, I'm, 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 uh, Painting sort of on a flat, I'm painting flat, which is a little, a little bizarre, but it makes it a little easier to see this as I'm painting it, hopefully. Um, so again, I'm just roughing in. I'm also painting at an angle. You see, I'm not painting up like I'm doing flat work. Uh, if you, if you paint like that, now I'm trying to actually, I'm holding close on the brush just so I can, again, I've got this away from my from my center and I'm painting kind of stretching out a little bit to, so it angles in the camera. So I'm doing stuff a little, I'm having to change stuff a little bit. Uh, if I was uh, sitting down and this was vertical, again, I'd have my brush and I'd be holding towards the back of the brush and I wouldn't, and, I, and I'd be using this on an on a angle where it's almost parallel to the surface of the board like so. All right, so we got the uh, this background nice and laid in. Now today we're just doing a simple demonstration, a simple study. Uh, again, what I've got, um, you'll be able to have, there's a photograph of the apple. You can watch how I do this one and then lay out the paints and try to execute an apple on your own. Um, so that's the background, that's simple, because again, we're not gonna worry a ton about the background. We're here to, to paint the apple. Uh, if I had more time or something, or if I wanted to, you know, create a little more nuance, I could start to very easily introduce a little darker value in here so that I have a dark side versus light side and so forth and so on. And I could do that very quickly if that was what, I, if that's what I was trying to do. I mean, I keep saying I'm not doing it and yet here, what, what, what am I doing? What I'm doing is exactly what I said we weren't doing. Um, but again, I could very quickly you know, make this so we have a, a, a dark side and then there's enough paint here so I can, so it will blend. So you'd have a dark side versus light side and so forth and so on. And we're going to do that in the apple. But again, we, we're not going to do that on the wall, not this time around. I'm going to do other, this is just a very basic idea of how we execute a painting. I'm going to be creating some others that are for more intermediate and even advanced painters where we're doing entire still lifes. And, and we're really getting more into depth of how to deal with painting. This is a lot more basic. And so we're gonna go ahead and paint the, the tablecloth. Now the tablecloth is, a is near a black, but the tablecloth is in light. And so this tablecloth, and because this, uh, the light that I'm looking at has a lot of red to it, and it's actually, it's, it's, a, it's a yellow orange. So it's got red, it's got orange. So I'm gonna be adding, t this is basically a dark blue gray and that would be the wrong temperature. Temperature meaning blue, and we're gonna bring it a little bit onto the, the red-orange side to show that we've got this light source that's a little bit red-orange. And so, and that's what I mean. I'm adding orange to, to blue, and that's why I'm saying warming it up. Uh, sometimes it can be a little, you know, when people are talking about warming stuff up like that, it can sound a little bizarre. Uh, but a lot of times, now sometimes the, the thing with warm and cool is people can be talking context. So sometimes they're like, well, I, you know, I'm using a warm blue. And so I'm warming it up because I'm adding the warm blue to the cool blue. Um, and because there's a little bit of ambiguity sometimes with warm and cool, that's why I'm telling you what I'm doing so that it's a little more clear. All right. So again, I'm, I'm mixing up more of this paint because I didn't have enough of it. And there's still not enough of it. I'm going to take that, take a little red, take a little more of that, take a little bit of this just to lighten it. I could go to straight white, but I'm warming it up anyways, and this is a light, warm white, so why not? Um, 
Now these are very, very, uh, these are professional color paints. You never want to use a uh, student grade because you'd never be able to get the, the, uh, the bright color that I'm getting. Then you might say, well, you're mixing a gray. What do you mean by a bright color? Well, you wouldn't be able to get any of this. It would just, you would just be a, it'd be a dull mess. Um, we don't want a dull mess. We, we want something that's got, they get a little more life. And so professional paints, I know, I remember when I was a student being just broker than broke. And I went and bought a bunch of student paint for my first painting class. And I just had to, I wrestled with it for about six months and finally ended up chucking the stuff. Because here's the deal. If I've got one yellow, one red, one blue and professional paint, I can cover the same amount of color range than if I had 12 different colors in a student grade range. So you actually so I think, well, I'm, I'm saving money and you're really not because you actually have to buy much more student paint to get the same uh, the same effect because there's so little pigment. The student grade stuff is not the, they're not the same thing. So if I'm buying an ivory black and student grade paint, it has a lot less pigment and a whole lot of filler and all kinds of other things. And that's why it's, it's so much, it's so much less expensive because it's, 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 uh, the, you know, the paint's inexpensive because of the way they, they create it. And it's, just not going to result as well with this few colors. It's just, it's impossible. It just can't be done. So, or if it has, I have yet to see it. So you're always better off buying professional paint. Now, the, the paints I recommend people buy are not expensive professional paint. They're the lower end of professional paint so that you're not spinning an arm and a leg, but they're really good paint to use. And they will give you a lot of control and a lot of color. Uh, you know, pre-tested Grumbacher is a good um, is a good uh, company to use. You have uh, M. Graham is a good company to use. Those are just my recommendations. Uh, they're my personal opinions. So you know, there's a lot of great professional paint out there. You don't have to just go with those. But um, I look a little bit into things. Uh, and find out if, if the paint you're getting is professional. If it's if it's student grade, again, what, what, what I'm trying to do here, and some of this may not, depending on the, the gamma range of this camera I've got, may or may not, because if you see this in, in real life, you're gonna, you're gonna detect a lot more of the color uh, in here than you would. All right, so again, I'm just warming this up a little bit. So this is a gray, but this gray has a little bit of red-orange to it. And then I'm going to put in the shadows. Now because the light is a yellow-orange, that means our, our shadows are going to try to cast in a complementary fashion. And I just went over, over, I went into the, uh, in, past the line into the apple. That's a good thing, because the last thing you want and I've got some of that here, so I need to get rid of that, is to have little white lines that separate areas of paint. You want to make sure that your paint overlaps so you don't have any emaciated areas of paint, as my, my professor used to say. Come on, feed that thing. Those areas are starving. It's an amateur mistake that you want to avoid. Um, and I could uh, do that with my uh, my dark gray and then I can also come back with you know to reestablish this line I could come back in with my light gray as well and whoops try that again why not? It's oil paint. That's the beauty of the medium. So go ahead and do that again. And then we'll come back in. I, I can do it a second time. I kind of want to try. Usually it's easier to, to do this with the darker lines. So I brought some of the, the white back down into it. And then with the darker color, we're going to go ahead and... Oh, 
Well, that's just, well, I'm gonna grab a different brush. So this is my wider brush. And I think I need a little more paint. So I'm gonna come over here. Like so. Now that gave me a, a softer line. So I'm gonna come over here with There we go, that's a little better. I'm gonna try one more time, see if we can... There we go. Now it looks like it pulled it down to, to white canvas. That means I need to reload my brush and do it again. All right, perfect. All right, now we're gonna do the... Uh, we're, we're gonna do our cast shadow. Now the cast shadow, again, that's where we're gonna see our complementary color. So it's gonna be darker, but it's also gonna be bluer. So I grabbed a little bit of my cobalt blue and I mixed the cobalt blue into my mix the cobalt blue into my gray. And so we're gonna come on in here. So this will give us a contrast in value. Plus it'll give us a contrast in color. Red orange against blue. And in fact, if that's red orange, I could even go, well, not only should it be blue, but it should be blue green because Red, orange, and blue, green are complementary colors, and the shadows try to push towards a complementary color. And so what this is gonna do is this is gonna make this look, it's gonna have more contrast than if I didn't do this. So this is the cast shadow, in case you're like, I thought you are only gonna do one value. Well, there's one value for the area of light, and then one value for the shadow, and then there's not really a cast shadow on the wall, so it was only gonna have one to begin with. So, Again, we've got this blue cast shadow. I think the blue could be darker still, so I'm going to grab a little more black. And I, and I went ahead and threw this down here. Now, if I was a beginner, I might have mixed this color. I just know I have to darken it, so I grabbed a little bit of black with a little bit of the blue, knowing the blue will lighten the black because the blue is lighter. And then I was gonna, I'm mixing it instead of mixing it on the palette, I'm actually mixing it on my canvas. And that's perfectly legitimate. But if you're like, uh, I don't know if I wanna do that because I'm not sure I, well then don't do it. You know, it's, it's, it's better in the beginning to have, to, to know what you're looking at or to have more control. So if you need to do it on the palette, do it on the palette. But understand that whenever we, once we put paint down here, you, you, whether you want to or not, you're mixing on the canvas, you're gonna to have to, because if I'm trying to, if I need to make that lighter, it takes a lot of paint to lighten a color, so I'd have to make it a lot lighter than it would normally be, so by the time I mix it in, it'll be the right value. If I have the right value on my palette, by the time it mixes with this, it won't be the right color. And that's just a, a, the part of the painting process that you get used to. All right, so there we go. A little, a little warmer uh, and a little bit cooler. And if I want to, if I thought I wanted a little more color, again, I could come over here and mix, again, a red-orange. Now, I do have a little bit of black in there, but since I've, I'm working this area, I'm not worried about it, because, yeah. And if I wanted to make it just slightly more like there's more intensity of light, I can introduce a little bit more red. Now, this isn't going to do much to that color. It's going to change it just a bit because it takes a lot to really change a color. So again, this just becomes a nuance. It's not gonna change the value hardly at all. But this is a little less red and this is more red and it's gonna to start to seem like a transition, like light moving across an object, very cool stuff. All right, but we didn't come here to, to talk and to wax all poetic about what's going on with the, uh, with the tablecloth. We really came here to do the, the apple. So let's go ahead and grab a little bit of yellow and we're going to darken that yellow now there's a little bit because it's yellow as it goes darker we're going to get some of the blues going on so we're going to get a little bit of green but we don't want it to go too green if it starts looking like grass it's still got to have because this is a, a yellow delicious which means it's a yellow orange there's still going to have to be enough yellow orange in that green to look like it belongs so 
let's make we sure we've got that and then we're gonna come on over here and we're gonna not we're gonna go ahead and put in this color now I can already tell you that looks too green to me and so I'm gonna grab a little bit of this red and a little bit of this yellow to put more orange in here it's got to have enough orange to belong if it goes too green it's gonna look like grass and it won't look like it could belong with an apple even though the apple is yellow and it's going a little blue because it's in shadow if it goes too blue in other words, and it which means it's gonna push it green if it goes too green it's not gonna look right it's gonna look bizarre and so we're trying it's a balance it's a game as we're painting this and we're trying to balance between the the extremes and so we're gonna go ahead and take all the shadows the shadow families and we're gonna merge them we're gonna lock them together and we're gonna merge them now this again is um, we're just we're, we're looks you know it's gonna oh, let me try it again so we're gonna put in our light value and it's not until we get the light value in here are we gonna be able to tell whether this is still too green or something like that it's uh it's still up for grabs uh, I also think that where the core shadow where this light shadow meet it's supposed to be the darkest but it doesn't it just doesn't seem dark enough so I'm gonna for right now darken just along where the light and shadow are gonna merge together okay like so and then we're gonna lighten this up just a scotch and this is sort of a uh, part of the dark values of the shadow family this comes under here and we get a little bit under there now we're gonna we're, oh that's right we didn't get any of the shadow over here so this is the lights coming from this direction and that means this side catches light while this side goes into shadow so there's a part of the of the shadows we haven't done yet and so I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to come on over here. And I've got to get enough of it, so I'm going to grab enough paint. right there <clears throat> and again it's gonna look somewhat somewhat strange right now because we don't have any of the any of the lights in now I want a nice uh, clean yellow I also have a little bit too much paint taking over here so we're just gonna wipe away if you're wondering what I'm painting on this I only do this for demonstrations I never use this in my studio uh, but people can't see my my palette's just always dirty and full of paint so <laughs> I don't bring it over here for it to doing these demonstrations because you would never be able to see what the heck I was doing but uh, this is just uh, this is tempered melamine on MDF or masonite uh, melamine is just kind of like uh, is uh, like the laminate that they put on uh, the the old countertops and kitchens and bathrooms that used to I mean they're still around but you don't see them as much as as you used to with all the stone manufactured stone and everything else people are putting on their in their houses these days but anyways that's what it is it's kind of so it's it's really great because you can you can rinse it off and shine it up and all that sort of stuff I want to clean out my yellow a little bit so we're gonna scrape scrape out 
this brown over here. So we're scraping this out, cleaning it up. Because again, we, we want to keep our paints as clean as possible because when you're only using three colors, it's much easier to get muddy color, especially when we're using black and brown. So we have to make sure our, our brush is really clean. We have to make sure that the, uh, the areas are kept really clean. Um, we always mix the, the purest and brightest color we can before we dull it. And so like, I'm gonna mix a yellow right now, but I just, I just tried to wash this out and look at all that gunk that's in there. And that will never come out. Uh, it's always gonna be in there. And if I don't get that out, I'm gonna try to mix bright greens and this gunk will come out and dirty my mixture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow, like so, and I'm gonna push it into my brush. And then I'm going to rinse it out. Now I'm rinsing it out over here off camera. And then I'll put a little bit more in there and push that into my brush. And what I'm doing is I'm overcoming that dirty, kind of yucky, uh, green junk. Which, and it's turning it more into yellow junk. And what that's gonna, what's going to happen is it'll allow me to make, mix a really clean yellow. So now I've kind of overcome most of that gunk and replaced it with yellow. So now when I mix the yellows, they're gonna be just as bright as you can get. And so I'm gonna start by, uh, again, mixing yellow. Now this red, this naphthol red, or even your apparel reds, they're very intense. So you wanna be very careful with these, with these, um, see, see that, how it just took over that mixture. Uh, and now it's orange. Well, it's yellow orange, I should say that. It's not, you know. Um, it might be a little too orange for what I've got for this apple, this golden delicious. So I'm putting just a tiny bit more yellow into it. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, um, I think we can, I'm going to mix up the middle values of this apple. And I probably need more paint. That's probably enough. And I need to thin it. Because it's too thick. And usually you have to modify your paint either with mineral spirits, some people do it with medium, some people do it with both. Uh, so anyways, I think I've got enough paint. It's about the consistency of of sour cream uh, So again, I don't want it, you know, usually paint can come out really stiff out of the tube And unless I'm doing pal knife painting you're gonna usually you, you want your paint painting Your paints to be buttery in their consistency Now usually I try to do a middle value I think... All right, so like I say, I was we're gonna I was going in here and painting this in. I thought it was a little on the light side. Uh, I still think it's a, a tad bit light, so I'm gonna darken it with a little bit of this medium brown. Now that's making it green because there's a little bit of blue in that brown, tiny bit. So I'm gonna overcompensate and went started to go a little bit green. So I'm gonna compensate by adding red, and it's gonna pull it more towards orange again. So I'm gonna cut in this apple with the medium value in the in the in the lights so this is basically our middle values not our dark middle values but our light middle values and that's what I'm going to use up here to cut in my my uh, my painting all right and again I need I need a good layer so again no more than two colors and I need everything to touch and the paint because we're gonna to want to be able to, you know, uh, move this around. We're gonna to wanna to do some blending and all that good stuff. And to do that, we're gonna to have to have enough paint down. So again, I have enough, I want paint everywhere. And if there's not, I'm gonna put it there. You know, even if I have some, you know, if I'm breaking into shapes, well, I can reestablish those shapes later on. So again, we're gonna make sure that everywhere has, has paint. So we're going to just keep cutting in with our with our paint on this. Getting that yellow in there. Again, once we see, we get the yellow in there, it's amazing how dark this is over here in the shadows. So again, before we change anything, unless you and even if it's way off, 
you know, with the value. And usually we're trying to match the value because we're doing limited palette painting. And if you can't get the exact color, match the value. Okay, that's the most important. If you can't, if you can't get the exact uh, color, match the value. And if you're close to the color and the value is right, people will accept it for, for being what it is that you're trying to paint. So, so again, I'm trying to get the value right. But don't, um, don't change anything until you've got everything covered. Because it's, it's not until then that you can see what your, uh, what your relationship is what the color relationships are, what the value relationships are. Um, so you're going to want to always have the paint covered so you can see what those are. Because what happens is people get a little antsy and they start chasing their tail in many ways. Start changing stuff here and changing stuff there and, and, and uh, it, it just doesn't help. Because you don't really know, you know, what, what you're looking at. If I'm building something from, you know, one of these pieces of furniture that's got 16 different places and I gotta read, you know, a 10 page instruction book, I usually wanna, I wanna see all the parts laid out so I can make sure that A, all the parts are there and, and, and that, the, you know, I'm not missing anything and, and all that sort of, and all that. That's very similar to the way we're gonna approach a painting. We wanna make sure that all the, all the values are here, all the colors are here, and then we can start going, hmm, and by comparing them, we can start making decisions and, and making, uh, you know, putting together the puzzle, if you will. And then for, if that doesn't work, I guess you have to break down and read the instructions. But, um, <laughs> which is probably the way you should start it anyways. But, um, and yet, uh, there's many times I've probably put stuff together and I probably should have read the directions. So, again, we're just putting in the, we're putting in the color, basic color for the stem. So again, so we have everything in here and put together and then we have color in every single area that we've got on the painting. And that's how we're gonna start this. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, come back in just a moment or two. We're gonna get this taken care of. To, okay. We've basically put in the light side and the dark side on the, sh on, on the apple, shadow side and the lit side. And both in, in the shadows and the, and the lit side, usually I look for the middle values the medium value in, in the light side and the medium value in the dark side. I'm now going to start to try to put in the uh, the lit, uh, the lightest lights, or in other words, our light values or light tones. So, let's go ahead and grab that. Now this is a little lemony, so I have to add a little bit of red to this. Because again, we're doing a golden delicious, and it's not an orange, but it's still closer to a true yellow. And that right there is closer to, you know, sort of a true yellow than, than this more lemony sort of yellow. And we're gonna lighten this up a bit. And this will this will give us a nice um, a light yellow. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and start to bring this in to my uh, my lightest lights here for my lightest lights. It's uh just a really good color to use. So we'll start there. And then we're gonna come over here and put a little bit more up here. These are our lightest lights. And I'm gonna, um, again, this is a really simple technique. I'm gonna put in a shape and then I'm going to soften it. I'm gonna blend it. So I'll put that there, I'll put that there. Um, we're gonna come over here. Again, we're gonna have these lights over here. And these lights get this get a little bit of the red soften that up a bit we have this through here now as these yellows get lighter they also start to have a little bit of a sort of a um, they go like a soft yellow um, just a little hint of almost peach so I'm gonna go with yellow and red to, enough to make it sort of an orange and sort of a light, again, a light peachy color sort of thing. And I'm gonna come back, that's too light though. I come back in here and it probably doesn't have enough yellow in it either. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little more yellow on there. There we go, just a bit. So colors are constantly shifting, light to dark, light to dark, light to dark. 
And so I'm gonna I'm gonna put some of this on here, like so. And then as as these colors go away from us, that's when we're gonna start to get some of the the cooling to it, a little bit of the green side to it. So we take just a tiny bit of blue and some of this yellow. Whoops, let's do this where you can actually see it. And we're gonna make, you know, sort of this yellow green. And we're gonna bring some of this in here, like so. And this is also gonna get a little bit duller as it goes as it goes darker. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the brown uh, to this mixture. Just a little bit of brown in there. And again, we're gonna to start to bring this again into the uh, into the painting. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a different brush. I'm gonna rinse this out. Because I'm gonna be working in bigger pieces. And I'm gonna start by I'm gonna start by again holding this and almost having it parallel to the surface. And we're gonna start brushing in very gently some of these colors just very very gently introduce them and then lightly you know uh, again brush them in as, uh, as I continue the painting so again as I blend I'm going to go ahead and again just pull the paint around just very slightly and almost some people call this tiling uh, it almost looks sort of like puzzle pieces when you first start uh, painting like this but it's whatever you want to call it it's just a very effective way of of creating you know different different value steps and such now i'm looking at this and again th these yellows are just a bit too much again of that lemony yellow so as i'm as i'm dealing with this i'm going to probably start to bring in again slightly more 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 red into the yellows because again, this is looking way too yellow green uh, for me. So, first we're going to soften all these a little bit. Soft, 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 all that good stuff. Soft, 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 all that good stuff. Um, we just want to use a very light, gentle touch and soften these things up. Really, so we're just. And we're getting started on this uh, on this painting. Uh, we're also going to go for the darker darks. Um, let me see. I'm going to grab some of this yellow. Grab a little bit of the red. A little bit more, perhaps. A little bit more, perhaps. There we go. Probably a bit strong, but. This is gonna mix with the other colors and we might be all right. I'm also gonna neutralize this a little bit. So I'm using a little bit of that brown gray. And again, I'm gonna bring this in. I think it needs to be darker. So I'm gonna bring some of this in here. And I got too much white in here, unfortunately. So maybe I need to start with another puddle. Start another puddle over here. Add a little bit of the red to it. Add a little bit of the brown to it. A little more of the red to it. All right, and start to put that in. All right. And as we come down here, it's gonna get a little darker still. Grab a little red, grab a little brown, and start to, because this is rounding underneath through here. Now, again, I'm going to take a little bit more, it's a lot of red, a little bit more of the red and yellow. And we're going to go ahead again and, and mix this in. Like so. You put a little bit more of the brown in. So give us a little bit of the, the, the green side, just a scotch. And again, we can just again work that in to the painting a little bit. So we're darkening the values, we're changing the, the hues a little bit, all that good stuff. Okay. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. We're gonna darken this down a little bit. Get a little bit more yellow over here. 
a little bit of red over here, a little more red over here, a little bit of this over here. And again, we're going to start to darken this down. Now I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more of this brown, and a little bit more of the yellow, and just a touch of red because that's going a little too green for me from what I'm seeing. So, and I'll grab a little more red. Like so. And we're gonna soften this as we add that to the yellow. A little more of this great brown, a little more of the yellow, a little bit more of the red. And we're gonna start to, this seems a little on the dark side, so we're gonna break into that a little bit with this, sort of the, the yellow that's between these two extremes. Sort of a transition color, if you will. That red is really strong, really taking over that mixture a bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add some more red to this. Add a little bit of brown to this, and then introduce this to the again to this apple a bit. All right, we're going to continue working on this and softening these edges and things like that. But we're going to come back and we're going to continue to work on this thing. All right, so we're going to continue working on this sucker. So again, this is this is the yellows, uh, and these again are just a little bit dark. But if, uh, better to you know have it a little on the dark side and go lighter. And so we're going to go ahead and, and continue to try to coax this into what we want, and that's what we're really doing with this sort of technique or just very softly coaxing the uh, the painting into into doing what we want all right pull this down a little bit put that into there a little bit okay and soften this a little bit now this we're gonna do this with all these because right now this is the point where we want to come in here and we want to soften because right now this looks like it's cut out of cut out of uh, cardboard or or you know what some sort of colored paper or something so we're gonna kind of smush these two families of, of paint together so they can start to feel like they're going around a form there it's light wrapping around a soft surface and not you know, big old cutouts or something. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and start to move this around, move the darks into the lights and pull the lights into the darks. And we're gonna soften the edges and soften the shapes and all this good stuff. So this is the next part of, of getting this ready to go forward and really start to move this, you know, move this painting along. So we'll go ahead and put that there. And again, we're gonna go ahead and start to Soften this, right? Go ahead and soften this, like so. We're gonna bring this around, soften this a little bit. Right, this is gonna soften on this side. So this is again, we're we're, very, we're using very, very simple technique. We're not getting. Uh, this is just the most basic technique of working with oil uh, where well, we're just kind of smushing stuff around a little bit and uh, it's fun don't let anyone tell you different anyone who says paint's not fun hasn't painted and I don't mean painting where you're going and 
you know, you're drinking a bunch of wine or something. What I mean, I get, you know, that's enjoyable, I'm sure. But I mean, where you're actually, you know, creating and it feels, you know, like when you were as a kid, where it was just so fun to, to do stuff, to, to play with paint, to play with colors. I mean, that's, that's where it's at. That's why we do art, is to recapture some of the creativity we enjoyed as children. Uh, to get back to a place where, you know, it's fun to, to work with this stuff. And why wouldn't it be? I couldn't think of anything better to do. Uh, you know, that's, you know, of course, that's why I do it. As I, it to me, it's, it's a really, it's a joy. <clears throat> Pardon me. So again, we're going <clears> to <throat> begin to bring... Now, I'm obliterating some of this, some of these families. You might be like, whoa, you're obscuring everything. Yeah, we kind of, with, with oil paint, there's a lot of times where you'll destroy and rebuild. And so now we're kind of in that, that phase where we're doing a little bit of destroying some areas so that we can rebuild them in a, in a better, in a better way. A little reflected light down there. There's a little bit of reflected, no, not reflected light, but there's a little bit of, that's not the term I'm looking for. The, uh, the light is warmest before it starts to cool. So I'm trying to catch that little bit of warmth before it goes into shadow, that little bit of orange, if you're orange yellow, just a little bit before then it fades into that, this sort of the green that we've got down here. Um, taking my eyes out of focus as I look at this, and again, it's it's too dark overall. I mean, we've got some values. We've got something that starts to look a little bit like form and substance, and that's a good thing. But we're going we're going to this is our 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 armature, if you will, or in other words, our structure or our skeleton, or you know the the basic idea of what we're going to do with this painting. We're just barely hinting at it. And then we'll keep building on it. So we we definitely have we have light values, we have middle values, we have core shadows, we have dark tones, all this sort of stuff. And we're just going to keep building to make it better and better and better as we continue the painting. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm, this is a little oh, this didn't get blended, so I'm going to come over here, blend this a little bit um, through there. That's kind of nice. All right, so let's let's go ahead and start looking at, at back at the object. I'm squinting my, taking my eyes out of focus. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of this, too much, a little bit of this red. That was a bit. Uh, need a little, need to thin this down. This is kind of feeling like spackle. That's way too tough. Um, so I'm gonna come over here, a little more red, uh, a little bit of white, a little bit more white. A little bit more white. Take a little bit. Now, as this starts to lighten, it's either going to shift towards the green side, and I need there's a sort of a little bit of a of the redder orange side as it gets lighter. So I was adding a little bit of red to make this on the yellow orange side as this uh, as this apple gets lighter. So we'll go ahead and again bring some of this in here, and we're going to soften it as we put down the shapes. Again, to keep it nice and soft. We want it soft. We want to keep that that softer relationship happening. Now, as this turns, it's going to be getting slightly darker. It's still this is is lit, but it's slightly darker. So I need to add a little bit of of. Uh, I'm getting it just slightly darker as it as it moves around this area. There's a part that gets um, uh, there's a there's a a dark sort of half tone. Uh, or middle value, half tones, middle value, they mean the same thing, uh, that comes through here. And I'm going to just go ahead and try to see, I've, I've got some, I just grabbed some brown that was off the off camera there that was kind of this puddle that's sitting out all by its lonesome. And uh, I wanted some of that, so I went ahead and grabbed it. Bring this down a little bit. bring this over here a little bit and again that we're gonna go ahead and soften that just a scotch right uh, we're gonna take this 
a little bit more of the the red again. We're going to soften this as this goes down. So it's going to be getting darker a little very quickly as it fades into into middle value and then you know goes right down into the shadow. So again, we're going to soften this edge right here. It's just a little hard. All right, and um, I'll look back up there. Uh, and again, there's parts of this that get slightly darker. So like this is just just ever so slightly darker right through here. Just a scotch, right? Soften that. Soften that. And then this gets needs to get, still get lighter still. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of, or quite a bit of white actually. Uh, this white again is a little too stiff. Yellow is a little too stiff. So we're, we're, we're adding some, some mineral spirits to again get it to that heavy cream sort of state. Uh, that's where paint's really the most workable and uh, that's where I want this to be. Um, is workable. I, I want to you know, be able to move this stuff around. So, you know, now we're starting to get this, again, these lighter lights, or what we call our light values, are up here on top, and this is where they're starting to come to life. Through here. Alright, I pulled the paint out of my brush real quick so now I can blend it. So even though I, I'm, I'm not grabbing a special quote unquote blending brush, but I am, if I ever need to blend with this, I pull the paint out, or most of it, sometimes I'll leave paint in. Sometimes I'll grab paint and I'm blending while I'm adding paint because I need there to be, either the paint's gone too thin or there's, there's a transition that needs to happen. So there's times where I'm not, like right now I don't have any paint in there. And then just before I did, you know, there, I, I slapped down some paint just a moment ago. So I filled, I filled with the, the brush with paint and then I, I went in. And that's where I'm, I'm adding paint and I'm blending paint. So, and, and you'll get a feel for it as you're trying to get these, uh, this, this painting to have, again, some life and to feel like it's, like it's got some depth. This also, I'm painting, I'm painting under a very, very, it's supposed to be a daylight balance light. And uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to look at this as I'm painting on the, on the little LCD screen. Um, or maybe it's an LED screen, I don't know. Um, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to look at this and it seems like, because I got these daylight balance lights that are very cool. And sometimes when you're, you're painting in light like that, it happens in, when you're plein air painting all the time where, you know, you'll be thinking you're painting in warm light and you think your painting's really warm, but it's actually warm because the light is warm and it makes you think it's warmer than what it actually is. And then you go and say like, oh, shoot, that's not as warm as I thought it was. Uh, and so sometimes I'm, I'm trying to compensate for a little bit for how, how uh, cool this looks in the screen. And so I'm adding even more red, but this could be an illusion of the screen and it may not render this way when I make the video. So, but it's little nuances like this that, that your eye can catch. But because you know the this uh, camera has a different white balance is what, what it's called, uh, it tries to compensate for the, the light around it and average it out. And it can do some funky things with, with the color. But these apples, the hard part about these apples, and that's why I've got, I started with a, a yellow that's more uh, on the green side, which makes it tougher because these apples have a definite warm cast to the yellow. And if you don't warm it up with red, it's gonna start to look too much like a lemon and not like a Granny Smith. The Granny Smith has much more red than a, I don't mean tons of red, but it has much more red, noticeably, if I put a, if I put a lemon next to it. And so I've got to keep that in mind while I'm, while I'm painting, is I've got to make it, you know, I don't want it to look like a lemon. I want it to look like, you know, the color of this, of this golden delicious apple. And so that's, that's where the rubber meets the road. That's the tough part, if you will, trying to get those colors nuanced and and of course blended and, and looking good and all that sort of stuff just get it working on all all the levels and that's the that's the fun part it's also the challenging part you know 
It's it really is. There's no two ways about it. Anyone who says painting isn't challenging hasn't painted, you know. But that's you know I don't think ch challenges are not a bad thing. That's why people climb mountains. That's why people, you know, you go kayaking. That's why people you know do these different things. Paris you know parasailing and paragliding and and uh, of course painting isn't quite that extreme. But I'm just saying it's the challenge that makes it fun. It's a challenge that makes it interesting. It's a challenge that keeps me, at least, as an artist, coming back and going, yeah, let's do some more of that. That was fun. I, I liked that. I enjoyed it. And, you know, you, you hear me coming back over and over again. It's about enjoyment. You should really enjoy what you're doing. Why wouldn't you want to? I mean, wouldn't that be terrible if you weren't enjoying what you were, you know, pursuing your interests and all that sort of stuff, having some fun, checking stuff out? So anyways, we're starting to get, again, these light values are coming in here. We're making these light values and we're, we're introducing them into some of these middle values and then blending them to get the, you know, the, the range in between those two. And again, this is, so I, I pulled the paint out of my brush again and I'm just blending this ever so gently. I, I've got my, my brush almost parallel to the surface. That's where you can really butter this stuff on. If I was like this, almost perpendicular, it would just pull all my stuff right back off of here. So you don't want that. You want to be buttering it on, not pulling it off. And so again, we'll go ahead. I picked up a little paint just then that's a little bit darker so I could blend it. So this is the process. You know, if you need a little darker, pull some, grab some paint that's a little darker and, and, start, and blend. If you need it brighter, now I need it a little bit brighter, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blend it with just some, some straight, you know, as, as bright as you, you could want sort of color again just to give me a little bit more transition you know between the pasty stuff up here and the dull stuff here and, and we want something in between and that's what I'm looking for right there is that something in between just a little bit of orange right there and that was really a yellow orange we're gonna take some of this over here bring some of that back in so again this is this is we're just nuancing the color at this point. This is just trying to make this a little warmer. These are still a little green back here, so I'm, I'm going to get to those in a minute. But we're getting pretty close to calling this almost a finished painting. Uh, at, least, uh, at least in the lit side. There's a couple things I'm probably going to do in the shadow side too uh, that we're going to want to have done that will really bring that together. Make it really sing, as people would say. Make it really look good. Just very gently bringing in some more of this yellow. Again, I'm hoping it doesn't look near as gr as green as it does in this. Uh, I'll have to check when I when I when I download this. And so I just I put some red back into this, but I can almost can imagine I'm going to turn these blue lights off and it's going to look much warmer. And that's that's what happens when you have different temperatures of light. Uh, they start to make your eyes think you're seeing one thing when you're actually seeing when what's said there is very very different from what you quote unquote think you're seeing and that's what's a little you know a little crazy about painting when you're you got definite colors that are casting and and stuff like that okay and usually with something like this I work a little darker and then go lighter so right now I'm using sort of the middle value and these lights over here and then I'll at the very end come and punch it with the with the lightest value so again I usually will start you know with a middle value working my way lighter uh, it's a good way to work with um, with oil painting and or acrylic painting uh, any sort of, of, of uh, any sort of opaque paint whether it be um, you know egg tempera or uh, gouache or or casein or you name it it's just it's a good way to go about it it's it's, it's a really good way of going about it go with that middle value and then and then go in there with the lightest at the last all right so we're gonna do that right about now grab this Go a little bit lighter up here, a little bit lighter up here, 
a little bit lighter over here. All right. Go a little bit lighter down through here. All right. Lighter through there. Uh, probably gonna leave this one alone because I don't want it too bright there. But also bring it just a scotch. A little bit lighter up top through here. A little bit lighter through here. So again, I'm just kind of nuancing this a little bit. Um, maybe soften this a little bit. Maybe soften that just a little bit. Uh, I think we're gonna try to push it just a little bit higher, a little bit lighter, I think. So let's try this a little bit more. So we're gonna try to lighten it just through here, just a scotch, and a little bit through here, just a little bit. All right. So we're trying to push those light values, or what I call the light tones, up on the top here just a bit more. I went ahead and used a little bit more red because again they get a little blushier, a little, little peachy. Um, at some of the tops they go a little bit on that red. They've got to go one or two ways. Either got to go redder or greener. I don't think I want to make this look like a Granny Smith apple, so I'm going on the uh, on the red side. Um, as far as that goes. Soften this. Soften this a bit. All right. Um, I think I'm gonna try one more time to brighten in just a couple places, probably in this area. And then I'm gonna put in the highlight, and I'm gonna call that done for the most part. Now, if, now again, I could take another three or four hours on this thing and really play with this nuance and go back and forth and back and forth until I get just exactly what I'm looking for. But we've already got something that's, that's looking, it's the right value, we've got light values, middle values, um, we have core shadows, we have dark tones, so we've got a lot here that's going to feel like it's very realistic because we've got all that going on for us. Let's go ahead and take some of this and I think we're gonna go ahead and maybe see if I can pull this up a little bit uh, just blend this in just a scotch just a little bit more um, yeah I like that okay uh, there's a little bump through here where it gets just a little bit lighter now not much so you gotta be careful when you're doing this, but it catch. Oh, that was more than I wanted. So I'm gonna, I'll actually pull. Uh, I'm gonna paint. I'm gonna grab a, a mixture that's a little bit darker, so that I, as I'm mixing it, and that didn't do it, get a little darker still, so that as I mix, it's gonna darken this down just a scotch, as it's going down there. And then I'm gonna. This is the lit side. There needs to be a transition, so we're gonna pull this. And I grab just a little bit darker paint for like the shadow color. So as I pull it, it'll. Again, I'll give you that transition a bit. All right. All right, I want to see if I can go just a little bit lighter right up here. 
It's almost a highlight, but not quite. Like right there. Then I'm going to put in the highlight. Now the highlight again tries to go to the complementary side. The complement of, of yellow-orange is going to be blue-violet. It doesn't make it anywhere close, but it, again, the, the uh, highlight shift. And so the highlight in there is a very much a red, it's almost red-violet. Uh, or true red, so in other words, very much a pink. And uh, if I if I put that on there, it'll really start to feel like it's 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 the highlight. So that right there is just jumping off of there. And part of it is because I'm shifting it in its color. Highlights try to, and then that's part of the reason why coming up here, we're trying to use a little bit of red up here too. Uh, it's going to try to move away as it gets lighter towards these uh, complementary colors. And so the lit side is pretty much done at this point. I'm going to try to see if I can knock this back just a scotch. Um, let's see. All right, so I kind of knocked it back. And now we're going to lighten it again because I, I knocked it back too much. So we're going to bring that back right through there. I right, call that good, I think. And then I'm going to come over here and try to blend this right back through here just to scotch. All right, I like that. Now we're going to come back in here for the reflected light. So I've got the dark tones, which are here. We've got the core shadow that's along there. And we're going to put in the reflected light. So I'm going to look. The reflected light goes. It gets lighter, but it's also bluer. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to add some of this. So that's a little too blue, so we're going to add some of this. Again, it's got yellow and red in there. A little bit of orange. And now I'm going to kind of check this to see. Okay, that's too light. And it's a little too purple, too. So we're going to go ahead. It's a purple gray is what it looks like. So we're going to add a little bit of red. Because we need some of that orange back in here. A little bit of red, a little bit of yellow. Whoa. Shoot, that was not what I, that red, I gotta really be careful with it, and that right there shows you what happens. So I'm gonna take this red, mix it in with this yellow. Again, I'm gonna take this blue a little bit, and this will be so it, it doesn't go too blue. If it goes too blue, it won't look like it's, it won't look right. So we're gonna mix it into this, into this orange a little bit, so that it has a little bit of the orange and a little bit of that blue. And again, we're gonna come in here with this, and I think that doesn't have quite enough, so I'm going to go ahead and I think it's too light too, um, as far as that goes. So I'm going to darken it a little bit, a little bit of the red, a little bit of the yellow, make it a little darker, a little more of the red, take a little bit of the blue, go back into it. So now this is going again darker. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to try to darken that. Now it's not going to darken a ton, so I'm going to come in here again. Blue, even bluer still, a little darker still, and try to mix that in. So now at least I've got kind of three little little values in there. And now, and this, and this is really so important, is that if I get the values right, Everything else is going to kind of take care of itself, as people say. Um, you know, take a little bit of blue, maybe, and bring just some straight blue right in there. And then I'm going to mix this. Now, again, I put very little blue on there, and it takes a lot to really change and shift a color many times. And so when I start to blend this, all that that blue I just I threw down there, it just immediately disappeared because it's just it's going to become this subtle little whisper in here. And if you dropped out the, va the, the value on this, you'd see that this would look very accurate because we have the values right. And again, we're using limited palettes, so we can't match colors. That's off the win out the window. So this isn't exactly the exact color of that apple, and yet it feels like it because we've got enough. It's yellow. We, it's about the right value around it. 
and we've got all the all the form shadows. We've got light values, we've got middle values, we've got highlight, we've got dark tones, we have core shadow, we have reflected light, we have everything we need to give something a feeling of depth. And that's you know that's what we want. That's what we need to uh, to give something a feeling of depth. I'm going to come back in here because there's a part of this. To separate out that that stem a little bit, and then I come back to the stem. I'm going to actually use I need a very dark color. This is the underside. This is going to be the stem and shadow. And I'm going to go ahead and try to like so, All right? And so this is where we're just the little bumps here, little bumps there. That's that's what's going to make our our painting. So we're going to come in here a little bit more. Again, we're, we're dealing with value. We're not really trying to deal with super cool color changes. That'll come later. Again, I'm going to we'll post some more videos of much more complex uh, things that we'll be painting, and that will just uh, you know where, where we're going to be using much more um, sophisticated strokes and stuff. Um, again, I'm just coming right in here. Um, I got that little that little crumble right there and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with a light yellow and now you have to have thicker paint so it's got to be a little bit thicker but we're not doing impasto meaning really thick paint so we got to be careful how thick but we're, we're going to try to clean that up by coming in here right against it and there we go All right, so we've got the we've got the little stem in there, kind of a kind of a little bit of a thin stem. Truth be told, uh, seems a little <laughs> seems a little too thin. Uh, so it looks again that stem looks a little thin through there. Uh, we're gonna just do a couple things, and we're gonna call this pretty much uh, finished. So I'm gonna. My deep shadows in here go really warm, so it goes, it's green here, but then the deep shadows go warmer. So that's a little too dark because it can't be the same value as the stem. But I want to bring in some of the warmth as this goes into this deep shadow down here. Into the apple. Um, so maybe I'll even bring this over here. Maybe that's a little bit too dark, so I'll put a little bit of yellow in there. And a tiny bit of red in there. To get it warm enough, a little more red perhaps. And then again, we're going to come in here. This is supposed to be our our deep dark shadows um, for the for the apple, right? Okay, just that little bit. And then this comes up a little bit because this is shadow, so it comes up a little bit into these these little grooves, not too far. And that will give us just a little bit a little bit of depth that away. Now there's also something else going on here. We get a um, we, we, we have it up here where it starts to get a little darker uh, as this turns, right? So we're going to do some of that, but then right, so, oops, it's getting a little bit lighter. So we got to, we can't do that. Hold on a second. So what's going to help a lot is we're going to come and over here. And we're doing just a little bit of reflected light. So that, again, it's going to get a little bit lighter as it turns before it, it hits into that in, into that um, cav chasm, you know, into the funnel right there. We get just a little bit of it. Now this is a bit strong, so I'm going to have to soften it. But so I'm going to pull my paint out of here. Um, probably gonna take a little bit of pure paint, so I'm gonna blend probably with just a little bit of paint while I'm doing this. So that was it didn't take much. Went ahead and blended that out, and then we kind of lost the edge a little bit. So I'm gonna come back in here with. And 
Again, the stem has a little bit more warmth to it. In other words, it's a little bit more red, brown in a couple places. So I want to see if I can bring in just a scotch, some of that warmth. Like so. Yeah, so I think, I think we're done. So again, we could play around with this. I could go, hey, you know, these shift into deep shadow, they're gonna go warmer. So, you know, I could bring a little bit of warmth into some of these deep shadow areas uh, and, and things like that. You could just take all kinds of time to nuance the, uh, the outside contours and the softening of the edges. Um, there's one last thing that just caught my eye is probably this foot. This foot also kind of sort of rounds into shadow, so we just take that off, take round that off. So again, um, try to go ahead and use the uh, the reference that comes with a, this little with this little demo. Uh, watch the demo that I've done, and uh, again, we're just looking for the basic form shadows on this on this apple, and then we're just using a very basic technique. Uh, slathering the paint around and just kind of blending it out just a bit and uh, yeah give it your shot give it your best shot and that's how we learn so this has been kevin mccain with painting of a, a simple um golden delicious apple and i hope you'll get out there and give it a shot and uh you know stay creative out there have fun with it you know that's that's what painting's about drawing and painting is really having fun so enjoy yourself i appreciate you taking this journey with me have a good evening